Our scripture reading is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting of the hoping that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. I'd like to invite the kids forward for the children's time. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Finn. How are you this morning? The next, so funny, when I was preparing for this morning, um, I'm going to read something in a second, which I thought we would have already read. It's when Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Um, and it's and I thought we would talk about how we show our love for one another. Um, what's, what's today? Is today a special day at all? Mother's Day, right? So for, and you're with your grandparents today. Awesome. So you're with your grandma. Does grandma have a special name? Are you grandma? Yes. Nana. Um, we were very unoriginal. And for my grandmas were Grandma Kay and Grandma, <laughs> grandma Kay and Grandma Miller, right? Um, so, what are ways that you can show, show love? By not being mean. Yeah, that's a good one. Sometimes it's, you know, by editing yourself, right? By, Finn, anything? What's a way that you can show love to your Nana? What'd you say? I don't know. Yeah. All right, so... Um, I, was, I thought uh, we could t we'd talk about, there's, there's these different things. Somebody, brilliant guy, came up with this, uh, different love languages, different ways that we express love, right? One of those ways, there's five ways. One of those ways is quality time, spending time with other people. But I was just talking with a mom today. You know what she wants to do on Mother's Day? Be alone. She's, 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 I don't want anybody to bother me. I just want to go on a hike in the woods, and that's good. So, be, you know, and if we're listening to somebody, then we'll know what, what is loving, loving for them. Sometimes, you know, I would just like some peace and quiet for a little bit, and that's good, right? So that's one way. And, uh, but spending time really listening to one another, that's one way that we can show love. Another way that we can show love is by giving gifts, right? And sometimes that can, doesn't have to be something that you buy, right? It can be um, uh, the gift, again, the gift of time, the gift of, of, oh, here's another one, words of affirmation, saying what you appreciate about somebody, right? Uh, saying, I'm, you're like, I love that you're my mom, I love that you're my nana, um, saying things, I love when you, right? Um, acts of service, that's when you do something for somebody nice. Uh, yesterday, I uh, my, my, asked my son to uh, build a, a raised bed for me. And my words of affirmation for him were, I'm, I'm grateful for you and proud of you, because he did it all on his own, Right? And so that's word of affirmation, and it's saying thank you. Um, but his gift to me was the act of service. And then the other one is physical touch, right? Sometimes a hug or a kiss or, you know, I have learned my, that my family, I realized at one point that when I say, when I walk up to somebody and go, hey, they know to stand up and give me a hug. 
because I'm just, I'll just coming over because I, because I need a hug. And I have learned that they, I, that's all I have to say is, hey, and they're like, okay. <laughs> and they get up and give me a hug. But that's one of the ways that we can that show love to one another. And one of the things that, and you'll learn this as you go, we tend to show people, um, we like to receive love the way that we like to give it, right? So gift givers like to be given gifts. People who, uh, our huggers like to be given hugs. People who are um, like who want to spend time with you know have that quality time together. That's how they want to give love, and that's how they want to receive love. Which makes relationships really complicated. And but we're gonna, we learn and we grow together, right? Because we love each other, we learn and we grow together. Makes sense. Just so you know, I lost Finn a long time ago. I hope that I've kept the rest of you in this. But Sam is good to go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Can we say a prayer? We're going to tell God. So let's fold our hands. Fold our hands. Close our eyes. Bow our heads. And I'll pray for us. Dear God, thank you for loving us. And you have shown us love in so many ways. And you've called us to do the same. Uh, help us as we seek to love in your name. And we are grateful for um, all the folks who love on us. And we're especially grateful this morning for our Sunday school teachers. And uh, pray that you will bless their time in Sunday school this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next scripture lesson comes from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him, and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed on day in which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and of this he has given assurance to all by, the raising, by, to all by raising him from the dead. This is the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When Jean and I were painting on Friday, we talked a little about talking, we talked about talking about politics. We didn't talk politics, we talked about talking about politics. And we discussed how it's easier when you're with people of like, who are like-minded and much more difficult when you have with people with dissimilar viewpoints. Now, if you have a relationship with someone that you know can withstand the anguish and frustration of disagreement, you may choose to engage in conversation. Some of this is cultural, by the way. There are, there are lots of cultures that, you know, that I have been in and lived in where you, know, you can spend a Friday, Saturday night together, have dinner, you know, drink wine, argue all night about politics, and it gets really loud and really heated, and then at the end of the night you go, 
you hug and you kiss and you say, next Friday? Right. I have taken the tack of just trying to understand folks. Help me understand is my mantra. Or I tell myself I try to. But I also need to confess, since my, my folks are here, uh, that uh, my fuse is shorter with my dad for some reason. Uh, probably because I know he won't disown me. Uh, and, and, uh, and will love me regardless, but I need to attest that my work is not perfect in this, in this realm. With other family members, I just try to be curious, non-threatening. I try to seek understanding, not agreement, but understanding, help me understand. And I imagine that we all have loved ones that we would do anything for, <laughs> but we struggle to talk about politics. And politics, by the way, the root of the word, it's a Greek word, polis, it means city-state. It's how we live in community together. I would encourage each of us, and I've preached on this before, to build bridges rather than lob verbal bombs to, at one another, whether in interpersonal relationships or in the public sphere. Now, in the, in the public forum, it seems to me that the rules of dec decorum have changed or maybe it's not the rules, but the behavior. You know, you, you, you watch things now and you know, people will boo, shout out, try to drown out the speaker. You know, and again, that's cultural because if you, if you ever watch snippets of the English parliament, um, that's, that's all they do. Uh, it's amazing. You know, and on some level, it's understandable. If, you have, you know, if someone's viewpoint is ignored again and again and again by the majority, being told to disagree quietly in a respectful manner and then consistently being dismissed, it's understandable that people are going to act up. But that being said, I think we need to check ourselves when someone's humanity is not being honored and the disruption is intended to communicate a lack of value for the person then we need to, again, step back and examine our, uh, our values and our faith and make the golden rule our mantra. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. And again, when people are acting up because their humanity is not being honored, you know, I get it. I, I hear Sojourner Truth saying, ain't I a woman? Am I not a person to be valued? Maybe I have you thinking about some interactions that you've had in the past, so I want to reel you back in. And let's turn our attention to Paul, who's being asked to speak in Athens, to talk about his faith, talk about his religion, because they find it interesting to listen to different viewpoints. And, you know, it's not perfectly benevolent. There are some who think, oh, this should be good. You know, get, make some popcorn, pass it around. This should be fun. We have nothing better to do this afternoon. And Paul, who had been arguing with people in the marketplace and in the synagogues, is given a pulpit and the ability to speak. When I was a kid and I gave my first sermon at my church, I told myself, everybody here loves me. So no matter what, I had that to land on. I'm not going to get stoned. Paul, however, you know, last week I spoke about Stephen, the church's first ma martyr, who gave an impassioned speech and was stoned to death. Paul had been there at that stoning. He was still Saul. He had, the, he had not had his Damascus Road experience. Paul decided to take a different tack than Stephen. Stephen gave a long biblical historical take and then finishes with, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, forever opposing the Holy Spirit, dot, 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 which of course got him killed. And last week I shared how Stephen imitated Christ when he said, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing and into your, into your hands I commit my spirit. But he also, you know, Jesus could be pretty inflammatory with his words and guess what? It got him killed too. Paul takes a different tack. He seems to be taking the notes from 1 Peter. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence, 
Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may... For, <laughs> let me say that again. When you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. But we notice in Paul's speech that he starts with what he has observed. I see that you are extremely religious. He speaks to the context, listening to the, <laughs> listening to the, the church community, what he's observed. What can I say to these people? Did I just say church community? Not a church community. Listening to the larger community. What can I say to these people in this place and this time that will help get my message across? An incredibly effective tool in being heard is to listen first. Observe first. Seek to understand. Lay a bed of empathy and then plant seeds that might take root and bear fruit. This is what I think speaks to this time and this place. When we created our mission statement together for Grace Presbyterian Church, we listened and we asked ourselves the question, how is God calling us to be in ministry in this place, in this time, to these people? And the mission statement became connecting with people through Christ to serve the spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of the community and the world around us. Connecting with people. Connecting means listening. The presbytery that I am a part of, Highlands, which is northwest New Jersey, is going through a discernment process, and they are doing the same thing of listening to the churches. And I think that's the most essential thing that we can do. Listen. How are we going to be in ministry? Listen. During lockdown, during... COVID, I started a, when we were all online, and this is my former church, I started a, a midweek prayer service, prayer time, half hour, because I wanted people to, a, people to be able to do it on their lunch hour if they were working. And it was an incredible time, and it affected how I preached on Sundays because of what I was hearing on Wednesdays. Listening to them made me realize what people were going through. And I also got to hear, oh my gosh, I hit that wall the same week you did. And by listening, I was able to speak. Listening to the community, listening to our church community, and listening to the longing of our own hearts. And then choosing how to respond. I think that should be everyone's strategy for ministry moving forward. And, of course, listening to the Holy Spirit. And that is a piece in Stephen's speech and also in Paul's. And Paul quotes these beautiful lines. In God we live and move and have our being. I want to say it again. In God we live, we move, we have our being. Just imagine Paul talking to these people in Greece. Your gods are distant. They make decisions from the sky. Your gods are moody and fight with each other. Let me tell you about the God that I have come to know through Jesus Christ and experienced in the Holy Spirit. This God walks with you, lives with you, lives in you. God's Spirit will tell you whether to go left or right if we learn to listen, not to control you, but so that you, me, all of us can have abundant life. This God with us in spirit, in intimacy, listens to us as we listen for God's voice. That's a game changer. It's a radical shift. It changes everything. It alters how we live, move, and have our being. And some that day heard the Spirit's call and would embark on the journey of faith. And it, the journey of faith is a listening journey. 
How many? I'm just thinking I, the the teachers. What you know? Did you get on your report card when you were little? When you were little, was a good listener, or did you get need to learn learn to listen better? Listening is listening to one another is a discipline. Listening to ourselves can be like mining for gold. It's amazing. We're you know no matter how old you are, we're still learning learning about ourselves. Listening for the voice of God is a prayerful discerning. We do better if we approach our listening with humility. And we will find ourselves grateful. And we are all well advised if we remember that God's God's voice is rooted in grace and graciousness. And that when we speak in God's name, we need to remember that God's language is grace. And we will be called to speak. And if we have listened well, we will offer an invitation that speaks to the particularity of that person and their circumstance. And so we listen, we observe, we pray, and then we speak. I was thinking about Paul observing. I have noticed all of these idols. Let me tell you about the living God. I wonder if what idols we would be called out for in the church today. For some... People limit the voice of God to the Bible. And even Jesus said, if we read in John, you know, I have said, you know, what you could handle now, but I'm sending my advocate who will reveal more things to you. And I think some people limit God. They're listening just to this. But when we read this, it is always in conversation with God, listening for the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes reading scripture so dynamic. But we are always listening if we are being faithful. How do we listen? I have been convicted recently for the need for more silence, for more listening, for more simply being with God in an open stance, not necessarily with a question, but with an openness willing to be led. The temptation is always to fill the silence. There's lots of folks who are incredibly uncomfortable with any kind of silence, so the radio gets turned on, the TV gets turned on. If silence is something that you are uncomfortable with, it's, it's, it's a muscle, start with a small dose. Like, you don't start running a marathon. You start with, you know, the couch potato to the 5K, right? So you start with little snippets of silence and then grow in your comfort with it. Just being, listening, open. God is calling us to speak to a world that needs to know that God is and that we worship the living God. We may have to use words, but remember that our actions speak louder. But before we speak or do anything, Let us not forget to listen and observe. The God in whom we live and move and have our being is with us and will make it so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.